Hi, I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. And I did that after I was a divorce mediator. I, I, didn't, I don't have a background in psychology, at least Western psychology. And I know as a divorce mediator, where all my clients virtually came from therapy, from couples counseling, that it really doesn't work for marriage. It doesn't fit. Because marriage is a very spiritual thing. It's love. It's based on love, isn't it? You got married for love. You got married because you wanted to experience unconditional love and happiness, which by the way, these are birthrights. You know, God gave us the consciousness that we can be happy. And so we should be happy all the time. Connect the dots. We have free will. All we have to do then is know what we need to do to be happy and we'll be happy. It's really that simple. And we get married to be happy because we believe rightfully so that marriage will make us happy. Now, that means that you have to do your part to make your husband happy and hopefully because no one can control him and he can't control you so it's an individual path, you might say. We get married based on, I will be of service to you, right? You don't take vows where you say, and I promise that you will love me forever. <laughs> you say, I promise that I will love you forever. And in the back of your mind, because we have been mistaught, in the back of your mind, you're going, and that's what you're gonna do for me, right? But it isn't right. That's not how love works. That's not how service to one another works. It's not a tit for tat. We don't play that game. Marriage isn't a business. Because what if, God forbid, something should happen to one of you and one of you simply can't perform as you could before you got married? So you have to take on full responsibility for loving your husband and if he were coming to us, we would tell him, you have to take on full responsibility for loving your wife. But when you come, I can't talk to your husband through you. I don't want you to say, well, Paul Friedman said, that won't work. Free will, we have free will. But what you can do is you as one, you know, picture it this way. Think of two horses pulling a wagon. And that way, and you're the two horses, no offense, but you're the two horses and the wagon is your marriage, it's your life. Well, if one of you is kind of falling asleep while you're walking and the other one says, that's fine, I'm just gonna pour it on a little bit, that wagon's gonna get pulled along anyway, right? Another analogy is if you're on opposite sides of a river and you wanna have a bridge of connection, doesn't take both of you to create that bridge. Only one of you needs to build it. And in this case, what's happening is where your husband is thinking he's always right. What's really happening here is you're being critical of him for having a character trait that you don't happen to like. So what's behind that? What's behind that is that you're the one who's raising the bar on what he has to do to please you. I mean, maybe he does always think he is right. And my response, if the two of you were meeting with me together, is so what? You actually also think you're always right too. You just don't articulate it the way he does. Virtually all of us have that character trait of thinking we're always right. All of us do. It's part of our makeup because as souls, we incorporate within our life, body, and mind. And the body is all about self-preservation, which is always about whatever I do is going to be right. It's just that what's probably happening is he's acting it out. And, you know, I don't want to be too much of a generalist,
but it's not unusual for men to put out their feathers like that. You know, peacocks, the female is a very common looking bird, but the male, he's got all the colorful tail and the plumage, and that's what men do, generally speaking. So he's letting you know he's always right. You don't have to take that on, do you? Instead, find him adorable. Find him amazing. Find him the way you found him when you were dating. As the man who you want to just open up your heart to and love and devote your life to and really have an amazing marriage because it's all about having an amazing marriage. And if we start dissecting each other and labeling each other, we're going to lose that. You know, our approach to marriage at the Marriage Foundation is very different. It's based on very sound principles, so you should be a subscriber to the channel so you could learn about marriage, how we teach it, see if you agree with it. Most people it resonates with. Some people, not so much. It's okay. There's room for all of us. Thank you for spending time with me. Like the video if you thought it was useful. Read more of our material at our website. Leave a like, a comment. God bless you and take care.